Hey, this is Ben Tate for CG Tuts, and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at uh, a few different techniques to do a basic global illumination render uh, inside of Max, uh, also referred to as a clay render or even an ambient inclusion render. Okay, and these are uh, three different renders here uh, that are the final result of each section of this tutorial. Okay, and I know a lot of people out there are curious on how to uh, get this kind of render for a model presentation or whatever. Okay, so we're going to look at how to do this in uh, three different renders. We'll start out with the basic scan line inside of Max and uh, look at setting up the scene, uh, applying some shaders to the objects so that you'll get a good uh, smooth render. Okay, and we'll also look at how to do GI inside the scan line render using something that's called Light Tracer. Okay. We'll also look at adjusting settings, uh, adding an additional light into the scene so we can get some directional shadows here, and also finalizing uh, render settings to get a smooth and uh, accurate result at the end. Then we'll move into uh, Mental Ray, uh, which also ships with Max, and we'll look at using uh, global illumination as well as final gather uh, inside Mental Ray. Uh, we'll look at how to deal with some hard edge geometry here. Uh, any kind of uh, objects that have really sharp edges can sometimes give you a problem when you do a GI render. All right, so we'll look at some uh, ways to improve uh, that. Uh, we'll also look at some uh, sample settings and how many rays to cast into the scene and so on. And look at adding some additional mental ray lights into the scene to get some uh, color variation in our shading, as well as how to tweak out and finalize render settings to get a smooth result. And finally, we'll move on to using the V-Ray Renderer, okay, and uh, the V-Ray Renderer doesn't ship with Max. You'll have to purchase that and install it separately to be able to follow the V-Ray section here. Okay, so we'll look at how to do uh, global illumination inside of V-Ray, uh, some of the settings for our GI uh, bounces and so on. We're going to be using the Irradiance map, uh, so we'll look at how to set that up so you can get some uh, pretty quick test renders before you actually render out uh, a really uh, high uh, res version. Okay, we'll also look at how to implement uh, HDRI image for image based lighting in the scene. And we'll look at uh, also how to set up a quick studio lighting rig uh, inside of Max uh, to complement the GI uh, using some V ray lights. Uh, then we'll move on and look at how to reduce noise in your render and uh, tweak it out to get a good result and uh, finalize all the settings and at the end there I'll show you how to remove the background plane uh, just in case you want to composite uh, your render or your objects onto another background. All right, So we'll look at a couple of techniques for removing the background plane without screwing up the lighting. Okay so that's what we're going to be doing and let's just jump into Max and get started. Okay so before we get going here on the tutorial uh, let's just take a look at a few renders of what we're trying to achieve. All right, so I have this one here, which is uh, a render from another tutorial I did. And I've received quite a few emails uh, asking how I did the preview uh, renders for my tutorials on CG Tuts. All right, so we have the car rim here and tire, and then I also have the fire hydrant. And these two are very similar. They're actually rendered inside the same lighting rig, okay? And pretty much what these are are just uh, a global illumination render. And what that pretty much means is the uh, scene is being blasted with light from pretty much every direction, almost like a light dome over the top of the scene. All right, so we're getting light cast in, rays of light from uh, every direction into our scene here with our model. All right, and that's why we get these uh, shadows underneath all the edges around all the uh, punch-ins and all the detail. All right, and usually global illumination is used uh, with additional lighting just to uh, show detail on a model uh, better than what you'd get with just a couple of standard lights. All right, you can see I actually have another light in here that's uh, up in the top right here that's actually casting this shadow off the fire hydrant. Okay, so this is pretty much what we're going to be trying to achieve in the tutorial. Um, I also have another render here, and this is another tutorial I did, and you can see this one looks a little bit different. Um, it's pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, it's a GI render on just a standard gray uh, model or white model but you can see that it has a lot of additional uh, color in it than just the standard uh, flat white you can see we have a little bit of like an orange tinge over here as well as a bit of a blue uh, on this side and that's because this one was actually rendered inside a, a studio lighting rig 
along with uh, global illumination. And for the global illumination on this, I used an HDRI image to cast light into the scene. Okay, we'll get into that later on. But first of all, we're going to start out just trying to achieve uh, this kind of render um, using the scan line at first. Then I'll do a uh, show a couple examples of how to do it in Mental Ray. And then finally, we'll move on to V-Ray. And these actually were all rendered in V-Ray. And you don't necessarily need to have V-Ray to get a good uh, GI render. Mental Ray actually works really good for it. It might even be better than uh, V-Ray. And you can also do it with a scan line. Uh, a lot of people don't think that the scan line can do GI, but it actually can. Okay, so we'll get into this right now. Let's jump back into Max. All right, so for our test renders here, we're just going to use a really simple scene. Uh, we don't want to use it as a too complex of a model, else it's going to take forever to render. Okay, so what I did was just make a quick uh, scene setup using just some basic uh, primitive objects from Max. All right. And you can download that. I'll include a link where you can download it. So let's just import it in. All right, saved it as an OBJ. So let's just go to File and Import. And I have it saved on my desktop here. Okay. And just pull this down to uh, Wavefront Object, OBJ. Okay. And then we'll pick our scene here. And it's called Test Scene. We'll just hit Open. Okay. And for these, make sure you're on multiple. So you uh, don't have just a single mesh where everything's attached as a single mesh. Okay. So I usually use these options and they should work uh, fine for you. Okay, so we'll hit OK, and that'll open up our scene here. And it's really simple. Let's just go into perspective view here. And I'm just going to get rid of that selection bracket with J and the grids with G, and I'm going to turn on the edges with F4. Okay, so pretty much we just have a plane here that's uh, extruded out and up, and this will be our background. Okay, and then I just have a couple of simple objects here, a teapot, a couple of spheres, and a torus knot. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is with everything selected, I'm just going to change the color to black. Okay, and I'm going to hit M to open up the material editor. And we'll just grab a blank slot here and assign it to everything. Okay, and let's actually change the fuse color to a little bit of lighter shade. All right, so let's go maybe 190 on the RGB. Okay, that'll give us a kind of a light gray. All right, then I'm going to grab another blank slot here. And we're gonna change the diffuse color on this one to something a little darker. Let's do like 55 on the RGB. Okay, now it'll give us a dark gray. All right, so we'll just select our plane here and we'll apply it to that, all right? Just so we get some separation from the background uh, by having two different colors. And if you use the same color, you can use the same uh, uh, material on both the background and your object, but uh, if you slightly change the color in the background, uh, it'll definitely add some depth to your scene. It won't look so flat if uh, things aren't blending together with the same uh, color. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom in a little bit on this. And I'm also going to create a camera. So I'm just going to go up to Create, down to Cameras, and Create Camera from View. And you can also do that by hitting Control c And I believe the default is Control alt c Okay, so now we have a camera in here. And we also want to smooth out this background plane here. All right, so I'm going to select that. And let's actually, let's actually select all of our objects here. I'm just going to convert them to edible poly. They'll come in as edible mesh when you import an OBJ. So I'll just usually switch those back to uh, edit poly. Okay, so we'll select our background plane here. And we're just going to put a turbo smooth on to smooth out that back uh, edge. All right, so we'll do turbo, turbo smooth two durations, and it's going to do ice line display. Okay, you can see in the left view here, uh, we have a nice curve going up from the ground to the back wall. All right, and if you want to adjust that, just drop down in the modify panel to edit poly, go into vertex, and then turn on show and result. All right, and you can just move the verts around with uh, the move tool to uh, sharpen up or smooth out the corner there. All right, so I'm just going to move that in like that. So I have a nice roll up the wall. So let's turn that off. Right, and I think I'll also apply uh, the turbo smooth to the objects just so it doesn't look so jaggy. Okay, you can see this looks pretty uh, terrible here. Okay, so I'm just going to actually right click on the turbo smooth for the plane. And I'm going to copy the modifier. And then we'll just select each object here. And we'll just paste the modifier in there. All right, so just right click and paste. We'll do that for each one.
Okay, so just apply it to each one so everything's nice and smooth. Okay, so now we'll get into some uh, test renders here. All right, so I'm just going to hit F9 to render with no lights in the scene. And you can see what that looks like. It looks uh, pretty bad. Uh, we have really no lighting in the scene besides the default max lights. Okay, so I'm just going to do a couple of test renders here so we can compare uh, the results. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to click this little button here and I'll give you a clone of the render. So we'll just minimize that and we'll close the render window here. Okay, so to do uh, GI with the scanline renderer, we're going to use something that's called Light Tracer. And we can get to that by going up to the render menu and down to renderer, or you could hit F10. And if we go into the advanced lighting tab here and pull this down, you can see we have light tracer and radiosity. All right, I'm not going to go over radiosity uh, in this tutorial. I'm just going to cover uh, light tracer. Okay, so select light tracer there for the plugin. And the default settings here will give us a uh, basic global illumination in our scene. All right, so if we do another test render here, you'll see that nothing uh, has changed on the render from the previous one, it looks exactly the same. And that's because we need to add in additional light to give us uh, some global illumination or to generate global illumination from. Okay, so we'll close that, close that. Let's go into the create panel and into the lighting tab. And we'll use the skylight to uh, generate this. Okay, so I'm gonna select the skylight and I'm gonna go into the top view. And I'm just gonna click that in the scene. And don't worry about where it's located. Uh, it doesn't really matter as long as you have one in the uh, environment. Okay, so we'll put that there and we'll leave it at the default settings for now. Okay, so let's do another test render with F9. And I'll just pause by these renders so we don't have to uh, wait for it. Okay, and there it is. And if you compare it to the original, you can see it looks a lot better already. Um, this one looks a lot more 3D, it has a lot more depth uh, over the original one here with no lighting. Okay, so we'll start with this and obviously it's a little dark and we also have quite a bit of grain in the shadows. Uh, so we can improve upon this quite a bit. So I'm going to clone this one and minimize it. And we'll go back into the uh, rendering menu with F10 and back into the light tracer settings here. And I'll just cover a couple of these uh, settings here. I'm not going to go over every single thing. Okay, so we have the global multiplier here, and this controls the uh, illumination on all the lights in the scene. Okay, so if we take this up a bit, let's do 1.5 and do another render. And you can see this one's a lot uh, brighter than the previous one here. Okay, so that's kind of like an over, uh, overall override for the scene. Let's just take that back down to 1. And for skylights here, that is uh, an override for the skylights in the scene, and you can have more than one skylight. So this will kind of uh, control the overall uh, settings for them. All right. Uh, rays and samples here. Uh, the higher this number, the less noise you'll have uh, in the scene. But the more you go up on this, the slower it'll render. Okay, so keep that in mind. You don't want to go too high, else it's going to take absolutely forever to uh, render something out. Let's just take it up maybe to, uh, say, 500 here. And we'll do another test render. And if we compare this one to the previous one, you can see that the lighting is the same, but we have far less noise uh, on this one with higher sample settings. Okay, so you can take that up quite a bit. Let's clone this one and minimize it. And the filter size here, if you go up on that, that'll also uh, help reduce noise uh, in the render at a cost of uh, render time. So. You can uh, play with these settings. You don't want to go too high, but just uh, try to work your way up from the uh, default settings until you get uh, it smooth looking or, or however you want it to look. Okay, and then uh, let's go over here maybe. And let's see. We have an extra ambient here, which is black, which is ambient light in the scene, and black means there's no ambient light at all in the scene. So if we're going to take this up, let's do maybe... Uh, Maybe a green color just for uh, test purpose here. All right, so we'll make that medium green and close. And if we do a render on this, we'll have um, green ambient light cast into the scene. That's going to change the overall appearance of the render. So you can see that'll give the overall scene a uh, green tinge. And you also notice that's a lot brighter uh, in the shadow areas. 
and that's because when it was set to black we had no additional lighting uh, cast into the scene but because we changed this to a color other than black it's going to use uh, some additional lighting and that'll make uh, all the shadow areas a little bit lighter. Okay so that's kind of like an overall tint for the scene. Let's just close that one and I'm just going to change this back to black. Okay and the color filter here is also uh, a general tint for the scene. Okay and down here for bounces, uh, it's set to zero. All right, so the light's going to get cast into the scene, and it's going to be uh, calculated on contact, and then the ray is going to be killed. It won't bounce off. Okay, so if we take this up, let's just say two, and then do another render. Okay, so you'll notice that this one is quite a bit brighter than the previous one here. Okay, and the only thing different for the settings is the number of bounces. All right, so what's happening here is light is casting into the scene and it's hitting a surface and then bouncing off and hitting another surface and then bouncing off again and that's because it's set to two bounces okay so the light will bounce around a lot more which will bright up, brighten up the uh, overall scene all right and it'll take quite a bit longer to render if the bounces are higher you don't need to really go too high you might even want to leave it at uh, zero or one say okay so that's what bouncing uh, does it's just Minimize that again. All right, so I'm going to take this back down to zero for now. Okay, we also have color bleeding here. Uh, and let me just minimize this for a second. I'm just going to open up the material editor again by hitting M. And let's choose a new slot here. And let's change the diffuse color on this to maybe something a little bit uh, of a red color. Let's do maybe uh, 245, 45. Okay, and I'll give us a it's kind of a saturated red. All right, so let's maybe select the teapot here, okay, and we'll apply that material to it, okay. And let's do another render here of F9. Okay, and we'll do a clone of this render and minimize it. Okay, and I'm also going to go back into the material editor and just hit two sided on the red material, okay, so that. We won't see through the uh, gaps here. It'll actually render both sides of the uh, inside and out of the teapot. Okay, so let's go back into the render settings here for Light Tracer. Okay, and you can see the color bleed here is set to one, which is the default value. Um, and what color bleed is is pretty much um, if you take this up when light comes in and hits the surface of uh, say this teapot here and then bounces back off it'll actually pick up some of the color off of this material, in this case the red color, and then kind of project it onto the surrounding uh, environment or objects. Okay, so let's take this up maybe to say three, and then we'll do another test render. So you can see that render looks absolutely no different than the previous one. Okay, and the reason for that is because the color bleeding uh, depends on the number of bounces in the scene here. We have it set to zero, so the light's not bouncing back off of the surface of the teapot. It's just hitting it directly and then uh, it's uh, not being calculated any farther. Okay, so let's take the bounces up and let's do maybe like three, right? And we'll also leave the color bleed at three here and then do another render. All right, so now you can see that we're getting uh, some of the red uh, bounce off onto the other objects here. Okay, and you can see we got some of the blotch back and that could be fixed by upping the uh, rays and samples here or even the filter size up a bit. That also uh, help reduce the noise in the render. Okay, so I just thought I'd show that even though it's a little bit off topic of uh, our clay render here. All right, so let's just uh, clone this maybe and we'll minimize it. And let's just take the color bleed back down to one and we'll take the bounces down to zero again, okay? And I'm also just gonna change the color of the teapot back to the uh, gray shader here. Okay. So let's do one more render here. All right, so we're back to our original uh, clay render here. And you can see it's pretty good. We don't have much noise at all. And hopefully with the compression on the video, it looks uh, pretty smooth to you because I don't really see much noise in here at all. Okay, so that's pretty good. And that's 
probably good enough for your standard uh, clay-based render uh, for model presentation or whatever. Um, you can still do some further adjustments to it, and uh, if you want to brighten up the scene a little bit more, uh, you can either use the uh, global multiplier in the uh, light tracer settings, or you can even actually just slightly brighten up uh, the material uh, that you have applied. Right, so let's go back into the material editor here for a second, and let's just maybe lighten the diffuse color slightly, right? Just a little bit, okay? And one thing to keep in mind, uh, when you're doing something like this, uh, it'll very much depend on the colors and uh, of the materials that you're using uh, to the final look of the render. Uh, if we had a lighter color in the background here, the uh, objects in the center here would be much more bright, and that would be because uh, a lighter material will reflect more light back uh, off the surface than a darker one would. So we have a pretty dark gray here, so it's actually absorbing uh, some of our light being cast into the scene. Um, so if we lighten that up a lot more or change the color, it would actually completely alter the lighting on the uh, objects here. So keep that in mind. Uh, darkers will definitely uh, dumb down the overall brightness of the uh, render. Okay, so let's just close that and let's maybe add an additional light uh, in here just to uh, kick it up a little bit more. Right, it's still looking a little bit flat. So let's maybe go back into the lighting uh, tab here and let's grab a target direct and we'll go into the top view and let's just draw this out from the bottom right here uh, into the scene. Okay, maybe like that. Uh, I usually like to do my lighting at pretty much a 45 degree angle to my camera. All right, you don't want to have your spotlight directly behind uh, where you're rendering from, the point of view or else your shadows are going to be cast uh, behind the objects and you really won't be able to see it, it won't look right. All right so try to always have your uh, lights a little bit off to the side uh, from where you're rendering from. Okay, And let's actually just move this around a bit, let's go up here, we'll right click on the front view and change this to the direct light so we can see through it. And let's just zoom out the uh, fall off here a bit by going down and clicking on this icon here. All right, so I'm just going to zoom that out and it really doesn't matter, we're going to overshoot the light anyways, so let's just zoom the hotspot out maybe a little bit, and then we'll just rotate it up and try to find a good angle. Alright, let's do... maybe something like that. Okay, and let's go into the Modify Panel, and let's turn on Shadows, so we'll check the box there. Okay, and we'll just use maybe ray trace shadows here. Uh, you can use area shadows. They're pretty much the exact same as ray trace shadows, only they have a, a lot softer of an edge where ray trace shadows have a really sharp edge. Okay, so I'll just use ray trace for this. And let's also maybe uh, change the color of the light to a, a slightly orange uh, tinge. All right, that'll just warm up the entire scene a little bit and it won't look so uh, monochrome. Okay, so we'll just take that up a little bit. So it's just slightly yellow. Okay, and let's do a test render here, and we're probably going to need to take the multiplier on the light quite a bit uh, down lower than this, because it's probably going to be blown out, but we'll do a test render and see. Alright, so hit F9 here. Okay, so you can see that's pretty blown out here. Uh, it doesn't look very good at all. all right, and that's because the, the multiplier on the uh, direct light is way too bright. Alright, so let's do a clone of this, minimize it, and we'll take the multiplier down to, let's do maybe 0.4 or so. Okay, now it'll look really dark here, but it's actually going to be a lot lighter uh, with the, the render. Okay, also going to slightly tone down the yellow color a little bit. Just take that a little bit uh, farther down so it's more white. Okay, and I think we should maybe rotate this teapot around. Okay, so let's go into the top view here. And okay, let's actually center the pivot point to it. Okay, and we'll just spin this around a little bit so we have a nicer uh, shadow cast off the uh, end here, maybe something like that. Okay, and we'll do another render here with F9. Okay, so it's looking a little bit better here. Uh, you can see up here we have some uh, dark in the corner and that's from the edge of the light cone on the direct light. Right, so, so to get rid of that, let's actually clone this. We'll go uh, hit H on the keyboard and go back to our uh, direct light here. 
Let's go into the modify panel and we'll go down here to directional parameters and I'm just going to check the box for overshoot. Okay, now I'll get rid of the light cone so you won't see it. It'll just completely uh, fill the scene uh, without showing any of the edges of the actual light cone. All right, and you can also do that by just uh, bringing up the fall off amount until it encompasses your entire uh, scene or at least the part you'll see in the render and then you won't see the edges of the lights. Right, and that's something to avoid because it always looks amateurish if you uh, see the cone on the light. Okay, and let's also maybe just take the multiplier down a little bit more. Let's do 0.35 maybe. Okay, and we'll do another render here. Okay, so there we go, and you can see that dark spot up in the corner there. It's gone, and we have a pretty nice uh, overall result. Uh, let's just compare it to the other ones we did here. Yeah, this one looks uh, absolutely horrible. Let's close that. See, this one's a lot darker and also has a lot more noise than our uh, current one here. So we'll close that one as well. And this one's quite a bit darker without any additional lighting in there. And we also have quite a bit of noise. Okay, so let's get rid of that one. And the original one here looks absolutely uh, terrible with no lighting. Okay, so you can see that the global illumination can really add a lot of depth into uh, a render or a scene. And I recommend using, uh, using that if you can on pretty much any render you do, um, unless there's just some particular reason not to. Okay, so let's close that. And uh, overall, we got a good result here. It's looking pretty smooth. Uh, we have some nice uh, smooth shadows here underneath as well as the hard ones here for the uh, direct light. Okay, and it could probably be tweaked out a little bit more. It might be a little too bright up on top, but uh, that's not bad for a uh, scan line render or a GI render, okay, with Light Tracer. And later on, we'll get into a few ways to get rid of the background in here. If you wanted to actually composite that onto another image or something, you can actually do that without the uh, background plane there. But we'll get to that later on when we get into the uh, V-Ray section, maybe. Okay, so I think this will pretty much be good enough for the scan line uh, section, and we'll move into a menthol right next.